Taste at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, we'll have the latest on the efforts to get a new COVID-19 vaccine fast-tracked and approved for the American people. Outside with live cam, little rain overnight. Did it amount to much? And what can we expect on into the weekend? Justin Orr's got that coming up. Good morning. It is Friday. Let's say that again. It is Friday, Friday. February 26th. Oh, boy, do we need a Friday? Yes, we do. Justin, you were just saying that you are so glad that it is <laughs> Friday. I am very glad it is Friday. Uh, and, you know, it's not going to be sunny or anything today. It's not going to be sunny. Oh, it's Friday, so it's sunny yeah, it already. Yeah. But I agree with you. It doesn't matter. Okay, I, we, we've got a little drizzle out there right now, a little bit of cloud cover. But I think for the most part, Friday is going to be pretty quiet. What we're going to have to watch are the temperatures. We're at 52 right now at the airport, 45 burning stage, 46 comfort. There is some cooler weather to the north. Uh, as we zoom out some, I'll show you the difference here. And this is why temperatures are kind of interesting today you go to the south we've got temperatures in the 70s go to the north we got temperatures in the 40s and that's because we have a frontal banner sitting right across our area so it's going to make things kind of tricky today when it comes to those high temperatures but i think for the most part san antonio is going to stay on the cool side of things and the cloudy side of things and uh, looking at visibility we're down to about five miles in gonzalez two miles in kerrville three miles in fredericksburg so there's some patchy fog out there nothing that's too thick at the moment forecast Calls for some fog and drizzle this morning. We'll keep it cloudy through noontime for sure. There could be a few breaks this afternoon, and eventually we'll get those temperatures up near 60 degrees, right about where we were yesterday. The weekend is warmer. There are some slight rain chances, but our best rain chance comes on Monday. We'll time that out for you coming up here in just a few minutes, but let's go over to Samuel now. Look at your traffic authority. Good morning, Justin. Things are looking relatively uh, good uh, this morning at this hour, which is something that we haven't been able to sail every day, even at 430 in the morning. Uh, still some construction projects overnight this week here at uh, Loop 410 and State Highway 151. Also have uh, the construction at uh, 281 at 1604 to watch out for. Let's take a look at travel time on I-10 early this morning. 26 minutes if you're coming in from Bernie to downtown and downtown to Bernie, 27 minutes. And then once you get inside 1604, looks to be about 13 to 14 minutes each way. And here's a look at Transguide at 35 Pine, uh, looking all right. Uh, here's 10, the upper level at Calabria. Also uh, looking uh, fine this morning and 151 at 410. We mentioned uh, that area uh, this morning. That is definitely somewhere that's looking good. Had some problems during the winter weather last week, guys, but uh, things looking fine on this Friday morning. Let's uh, send it back over to you. Thank you, Samuel. And Poteet Police and the Texas Rangers are investigating a possible shooting near an old taxidermy building. Officers were dispatched around 5.30 p.m. yesterday evening to a scene near Highway 16 and Amphion West Road. A KSAT crew at the scene last night says they saw a body being rolled away in front of VR Outfitters, a meat processing and taxidermy business. Police have not confirmed the possible shooting. We're still trying to gather more information. This could be a landmark day in the fight against the coronavirus. A third vaccine could get the green light as early as tonight. Meanwhile, the virus is hitting the U.S. Navy with two ships now heading into port because of infections on board. ABC's Ike Ijoji has more. This morning, two military ships in the Middle East have been taken out of service because of the coronavirus. The Navy says about a dozen service members tested positive on the USS San Diego, and several people on board the USS Philippine Sea are suspected of being infected. It comes as America prepares to add another weapon to its pandemic fighting arsenal. The FDA is expected to grant Johnson & Johnson emergency use authorization for its vaccine as early as tonight. Now that it's going to be only one shot, we're going to be able to vaccinate more people by the end of June. In addition to being a single dose, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been tested against several variants that are worrying public health officials. Moderna and Pfizer are already modifying vaccines to target certain variants, and both companies are testing a third booster in case more protection is needed. This morning, about 66 million Americans have received at least one vaccine shot. We're moving in the right direction. But the demand still outpacing supply. At one vaccination site in Massachusetts, 50,000 appointments were nearly filled in just 90 minutes. I understand that there is a limit of vaccines that that is a real tangible 
issue, but there's got to be a better way. Meanwhile, another warning about those variants of the coronavirus. Brazil just seeing its deadliest day of the pandemic so far as the Brazilian mutation spreads. And again, that mutation has been found here in the United States. Ika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. And here's a look at the latest coronavirus numbers here in San Antonio. Bear County is reporting 404 new cases and four new deaths. That brings our total number of cases to 194,736 and our total number of COVID-19 related fatalities to 2,514. 494 people are being treated in our hospitals for COVID-19, 194 are in the ICU, and 111 people are on ventilators. The city of San Antonio says 30,000 people have already signed up for the text alerts that show which of the local providers have vaccines, but that doesn't include every place that's offering the shot. Right now, alerts are only tied to the University Health, WellMed, and Alamodo mass vaccination sites. Not included at this point are HEB or CVS. Both say they're receiving a lot more doses this week for Texans across the state. If you'd like to get one of those slots, you have to keep an eye on their websites. It is all about helping students see themselves reflected in history. An African-American studies course aims to do just that and districts in our area are already hopping on board. Stephen Cavazos is live in the newsroom to share why experts hope the course will help shape a better future for our country. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, David. Well, it took a team of historians, educators, and policymakers to get this course off the ground. And David, they're hoping that this course will shed a brighter spotlight when it comes to black history. Now, San Antonio ISD and Judson ISD have already signed on board, but NEISD, Northeast ISD, that is, has just recently signed on and will incorporate this into their curriculum. Now, I spoke to Lawrence Scott, who is an assistant professor of education at Texas A&M San Antonio. He has also played a big part in getting this course into the classrooms. He says the goal is not just to teach students about civil rights icons like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Harriet Tubman, but help them understand economic disparities, wage and opportunity gaps. Now, he hopes these critical conversations in the classroom will take the country forward and develop solutions to close those gaps. Now, coming up later this morning on GMSA, we'll actually hear from Scott, who shares why students will play a big part in shaping the country. David, Alicia. Thank you, Stephen. 437, and I can see that. 53, 53 degrees. degrees. I couldn't see it either. Wow. <laughs> Still okay. ahead, more details on a ruling by a Texas federal judge that says the temporary halt on evictions is unconstitutional. Plus, Texas is now home to yet another site that will start processing asylum seekers. And taking a live look with live cam outside. Looking good, San Antonio. 53 degrees. Welcome back. The U.S. military has conducted its first known airstrike under President Joe Biden. U.S. forces hit a site used by two Iranian-backed militia groups in Syria. The move, the move came after recent rocket attacks on the Ibril El airport in Iraq, which left five Americans wounded. The White House did not directly blame any specific group for the rocket attacks in Iraq, but it did say that it would hold Iran accountable for the actions of its proxies. However, the airstrike came just as Washington and Tehran are positioning themselves for possible future talks about Iran's nuclear program. The nation's temporary halt on evictions has suffered a setback in court. A federal judge here in Texas has ruled that the moratorium is unconstitutional. The Trump administration put the brakes on evictions in September, citing the pandemic. But a group of Texas landlords and property owners then went to court saying the government didn't have the power to stop evictions. In his ruling, the judge wrote that Congress lacked the authority to grant federal agencies the power to halt evictions. The moratorium is currently in effect until March 31st. It's still unclear if the Department of Justice will appeal. And a third U.S. border crossing will start processing asylum seekers who have been forced to wait in Mexico. The ports of entry in Brownsville and San Isidro, California, have already started doing that. And today, immigration, immigration officials in El Paso are set to follow suit. The move comes after President Biden began rolling back his predecessor's Remain in Mexico policy. It forced tens of thousands of asylum seekers to wait for their immigration hearings in Mexico. But many of them have 
had to wait for months, if not years, often in very tough conditions. The White House estimates that some 25,000 people still have active immigration cases. The San Antonio Spurs back on their home court tomorrow night following a 102-99 loss against the Oklahoma City Thunder in OKC. They'll be hosting the New Orleans Pelicans. Tip off that one is set for 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. We've got highlights after that game for you tomorrow night on the Night Beats. 442, 53 degrees. We can see it now. Ooh, chilly. Just ahead, ways you can deal with anxiety if you're expecting a new baby during the pandemic. In this morning's GMA First Look, goodbye, Mr. Hello, Potato Head. You gotta keep them together because they're madly in love. Sprouting up this fall, a new storyline. Get ready for simply Potato Head, the Hasbro company rebranding with a gender neutral name. They're making a statement in the entire toy industry saying, this is the world we live in right now. The norms are different, and we actually applaud that. The popular toy brand set to release a Create Your Own Potato Head family, a set that will include two large potato bodies, a small child potato, and more than 40 different accessories, which will allow children to mix, match, and create the family structure they want. Coming up at 7 a.m., all the reactions coming in overnight, plus a look at the other iconic brands also working to become more inclusive. With your GMA First Look, I'm Deborah Roberts, ABC News, New York. And there was a lot of reaction after getting a lot of backlash online. Hasbro responded on Twitter saying while it was announced today that the Potato Head brand name and logo are dropping the Mr. I am proud to confirm that Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head aren't going anywhere and will remain Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. Having a baby can be stressful enough through a pandemic. You can start feeling a little overwhelming. To help ease the anxiety, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has steps you should take before welcoming a new baby. Sandy Sicular wears all this because she's an ER doctor. She's also six months pregnant, which worries her wife Erin. She was very concerned, but we took all the necessary precautions. This is their second child, but this time is different. Now, as things ramp up again, it's always in the back of our mind um, that, you know, Aaron might not be able to join me or I'll have to wear a mask while I deliver. We're hoping it, not come, it doesn't come to that point. If you're pregnant, it's important to take extra precautions to avoid COVID-19. There is evidence that pregnant women who have the virus are more likely to need intensive care unit admissions, ventilation, and advanced life support techniques. While you'll probably have to go to the doctor's office for ultrasounds, ask if some prenatal visits can be virtual to limit exposure. Prepare for delivery by asking key questions in advance, like where to arrive at the hospital, will you be tested for COVID, what is protocol if you test positive, and how many people can be with you during labor, and if hospital policy means your doula can't be in the delivery room. They can still help you, whether virtually or by phone, on the day. And beforehand, they can also help you to clarify your own preferences and to know how to advocate for them in the moment. And when you bring the baby home, grandparents and friends may not be able to come over. So plan for safer ways for them to help and visit. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's get over to traffic. A little wet out on the roads. Are there any accidents because of the wetness? Not, uh, not that we can tell uh, right now, David. Things looking uh, pretty good at this hour, 448. Uh, have some slowdowns here at uh, Pat Booker near 1604, but that's actually improving by the uh, moment there. Let's take a look at uh, Bandera Road between 1604 and 410. 12 minutes uh, heading uh, north and then 10 minutes heading from 1604 to 410. So that is looking good this morning. And here's a look at the uh, trans guide. Some of the roads, as you mentioned, David, uh, looking a little wet, some drizzle and showers uh, overnight, but things are flowing pretty well this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Justin, mm -hmm. is it going to be chilly for a long period of time today? Well, it, it depends on your definition of chilly, but I'll tell you, it's going to stay right around <laughs> How 60 How do you today? define chilly? Uh, I'd say like below 60. With that's, beans, that's, that's the chili. Right? Man. <laughs> With Man. Beans. He stole now. it from me, David. With beans or without. <laughs> right. Uh, well, in Texas, we use beans, right? That's just a thing. Uh, let's take a look at the time lapse. 
Uh, we had some showers earlier. It, David asked how much rain did we get? About 500 of an inch. That was it. A big whopping total there. It, we're not going to get much over the weekend, but I think as we get into Monday, we'll get some more significant and important rain. 52 degrees right now. Dew point is at 50. Notice the temperature of dew point getting close together. That means there's potential for some fog and drizzle. So just a heads up. Right now here in San Antonio, not seeing much of that visibility is just fine. You saw that on some of Samuel's transguide shots there, but uh, fog is developing up around Kerrville where it's two and a half mile visibility there. Starting to see some patchy fog develop north and east of Gonzales as well. Temperature wise, 52 degrees at the airport, but notice the temperatures down to our south. 68 in Beeville, 69 in Victoria. There is a frontal battery, that same one yesterday. It's just kind of sitting there. It's pulled up stationary and it will make forecasting temperatures today very difficult. But I think San Antonio stays on the cooler side of things and most of the hill country as well. And uh, places like Uvalde and Hondo is still fairly cool today. Dew points much higher south of the boundary, as you might imagine, and much drier to the north. But there is still enough moisture there to get some of that fog going. Uh, looking at the forecast high temperatures today, I think we're back right around 60 again today. That's where we were yesterday. Uh, you will find temperatures up close to 80 down near Beeville. And then even out west, some of that cooler air starts to erode a little bit. So 72 in Del Rio, 60s for everybody else. We mentioned some of that rain overnight. There was a little bit of it. The bulk of the heavy stuff's been up around Dallas. They had some pretty good thunderstorms here overnight. Still a few storms moving into far northeast Texas. And this uh, energy, a lot of it, will be moving east. And that means we're not going to see much today here in south Texas, really. Just some cloud cover. Uh, other than some of that light drizzle this morning. But these storms generally working along I-30 there towards Texarkana. And again, they'll get some pretty good rain up there. Futurecast for us, just cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. We can't rule out the idea that we may see some sun this afternoon, some brief windows of sun. And then as we get into Saturday, same story. Isolated shower can't be ruled out, but I don't think we see much tomorrow. Sunday. Rain chances increase a little bit, especially as we get into Sunday night and overnight into Monday morning. That's when another frontal battery comes in and our rain chances start to jump back up. But in fact, by Monday, with some upper level energy in place, I think we see some fairly widespread rain. This will add up a little bit more than what we're seeing this morning. I think we can see up to a quarter of an inch here in San Antonio, maybe up to half an inch to the north, one inch to the north and east. These are estimates here. Uh, once we get a little bit closer, we'll have a better idea. But the good news is that I do think we'll see some some rain that uh, adds up and shows up in the rain gauge. 74 degrees tomorrow, 20% chance of an isolated shower. Some fog and drizzle basically every morning through Sunday. 30% chance of showers and maybe a storm on Sunday. And then a 60% chance of rain Monday into early Tuesday. That will knock temperatures back down again and uh, clearing out some Wednesday and Thursday, guys. So definitely sweater weather. We love to hear it. Yeah. Right. Time right now, 452, 53 degrees. Coming up next, a preview of this weekend's Golden Globes Awards. Who's expected to take home the top prize? A preview of this week's Golden Globe Awards. Plus, there's some new shows on your streaming services today. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's the first big award show of the year, the Golden Globes, this weekend. And of course, like most things these days, it'll be mostly virtual. I'm your new lawyer. Which Best Actor in a Drama nominee and Better Call Saul star Bob Odenkirk tells me is a bummer. One of my favorite things about show business is the degree of social fun we get to have and the people we get to see. And oftentimes, as you get older, you're seeing old friends at these events. And it's a shame to not have that. Mank is the most nominated movie, The Crown, the most nominated TV show. The Golden Globes air live Sunday night on NBC. I think I'm going to stop singing that song. You grandkids will be singing Strange Fruit. Out streaming today, the United States versus Billie Holiday. Andrew Day plays the legendary jazz singer in this film from Lee Daniels about Holiday's fight against racism, drugs, and the federal government. That's on Hulu. We made this album in a bedroom at our house that we grew up in. So it's really like anything is possible. Also new today, a profile of a modern day singer in Billie Eilish, The World's a Little Blurry, which director RJ Cutler says chronicles the year Eilish went from bedroom artist to international superstar. That's out today on Apple TV+. Plus. And two very different singers with birthdays today, Erica Badu is 50, while Michael Bolton is 68. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
It is now 457 and 53 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on President Biden's Syria airstrikes that were in retaliation for a rocket attack in Iraq earlier this month. And a new photo sharing app that mimics the experience of using a disposable camera. It's getting popular. More details ahead on Tech Bites. Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, the Biden administration launches its first military strike targeting buildings in Syria. I'm Micah Jachi in Washington. Coming up, why the Biden administration decided to launch this strike. And outside with live cam, a little moisture in the air this morning. Not a lot of significant rain so far, but that may change as the weekend approaches. Justin Horn's got that for you coming up. Good morning. It is Friday. Let's say that together now. It is Friday. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? It's February 26th. Thanks for being with us this sweet? morning. Did you ever hear that song by Rebecca Black, I think? Friday, Friday. We're going to get it stuck in everyone's heads. No? All right, David, with the Friday energy. What year was that? I don't know. I I think I was still in high school, so maybe 10 years ago. Okay. (laughs) That may be why. (laughs) Let's get over to Jess. Jess, you were still in high school 10 years ago? Yeah. I'm young. Wow. David, it was a viral (laughs) sensation. It was a song that would never get out of your head, so we're not going to bring it up. (laughs) Well, we brought it up, but we're not going to sing it. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about the uh, bus stop forecast. If you're heading out there this morning, it is a little cloudy. It's a little damp in spots. We've got some uh, uh, clouds and drizzle for sure. Maybe a little bit of fog. Northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. But this afternoon, I don't think we'll see much. Temperatures will stay on the cool side. 60 degrees here in town. Mostly cloudy skies should turn into a, a decent day here for late February. And uh, this is the last weekend in February. It looks like we'll see some clouds, but not a lot of rain, at least tomorrow. The better chances of rain actually don't arrive until Monday. 45 degrees right now, Bernie Stage, 48 Boulevard, 49 New Braunfels, 59 down there in Pleasanton. So we do have a nice spread in temperatures because of that stationary boundary that is in place. You got 40s up in the hill country and then uh, temperatures near uh, 70 down around Kennedy and Victoria. And we'll keep that spread going today as far as high temperatures are concerned. Uh, visibility down to about six miles in New Braunfels, three miles in Kerrville. Five miles in Uvalde, and the forecast for today is some fog and drizzle early, but we'll get those uh, temperatures up into the upper 50s, maybe even low 60s this afternoon with a few peaks of sun. The roads were wet when I was driving into work this morning, but it uh, looks like they're maybe drying out a little bit uh, there, Samuel. Yeah, not as much uh, falling here in, in the past couple of hours, so they are drying up a little bit, but you may encounter some uh, slick spots here and there, like 281 at Divine. You can kind of see uh, still some slick spots there, but the traffic is uh, flowing well. Looking at the big map, uh, no problems really on the big map uh, right now. Let's go to the west side. They had some construction out here at 151 and 410. But right now, the travel times look good, uh, 9 to 10 minutes each way between 1604 and 90. And looking across the region, coming in from New Braunfels, 26 minutes into downtown San Antonio, uh, 30 minutes coming in from Seguin into downtown, 20 minutes on 90 and from Castroville. And we'll have another update coming up. David, Alicia? Samuel, new this morning, a driver badly hurt overnight after being ejected during a crash. It happened at the intersection of Caliza Drive and Marin Hills on the city's north side just after 1 o'clock. Police say a man in his 40s was driving eastbound on Caliza and lost control. His car ended up on a sidewalk across the road, and the man was thrown from the vehicle. Officers say he is in critical condition. This morning, new details about President Biden's first military operation. The president ordered the airstrikes in eastern Syria. Officials say it was a retaliation for a rocket attack earlier in the month that wounded five Americans. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, President Biden's first military strike launching two warplanes into eastern Syria. The target, a group of buildings in eastern Syria defense officials say are owned by Iranian-backed militias, believed responsible for recent attacks against Americans in Iraq. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin saying the military strike was employed to protect American troops overseas. We're confident in uh, in the target that we went after. We know what we hit. President Biden says the airstrikes were in response to a rocket attack on U.S. forces earlier this month outside Erbil in northern Iraq. The rocket attack slamming into a base that housed U.S. soldiers and contractors, wounding five Americans. On Monday, Pentagon spokesman John Kirby highlighting the aftermath of that rocket attack. These are dangerous attacks. Um, And as we saw in the one in Erbil, 
uh, an individual lost his life and now a family's grieving. Officials tell ABC News Biden's airstrike could have resulted in a handful of casualties, but that it was the least lethal option. That target was being used by the same uh, Shia militia that, uh, that conducted the, the strikes. And this morning, congressional reaction already flowing in. Representative Mikey Sherrill telling MSNBC. You can't simply attack U.S. troops without any response. And yet the response that he decided upon was measured. The Pentagon spokesperson telling ABC that the Biden administration, quote, acted in a deliberate manner that aims to de-escalate the overall situation. Now, President Biden says he's open to rejoining the Iran nuclear deal that the previous administration pulled out of. However, he says he wants to see even more restrictions. In Washington, Ike Ajachi, ABC News. And the head of ERCOT and the operator of the state's electric grid testified again last night in front of both the Texas House and Senate. ERCOT President Bill Magnus said they expected rolling outages in the beginning, but started experiencing high power demand Sunday. Texas lawmakers criticized ERCOT for not making the message about the severity of the situation more clear to the public. Governor Greg Abbott has called reforming ERCOT an emergency item during this legislative session. Putting a spotlight on black history and creating solutions for a better future. That's the goal of an African-American studies course that some districts in our area are now incorporating into their curriculum. Stephen Cavazos is live in the newsroom and explains why experts say it's important students understand the cultural impact of black America. That's right. Good morning, David Alicia. Well, we all know about civil rights icons like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Harriet Tubman, but these experts that were behind getting these courses into the curriculum are hoping to take that knowledge to the next level. Now, I spoke to Dr. Lauren Scott, who is professor of education over at Texas A&M San Antonio, and he's also played a critical role in getting this course into the curriculum. He says the goal is not just to teach students about black history, but help them understand economic disparities, wage and opportunity gaps. He hopes these critical conversations will take the country forward and develop solutions to close those gaps. That's what students need to see is that they too will play a crucial and critical role in the progression of our nation. Now, the courses are being offered at San Antonio ISD and Judson ISD, and Northeast ISD will soon incorporate those courses into the curriculum. Coming up later on GMSA, we'll hear more from Scott and why these conversations are so critical, especially during this time, of our, during this time in life. Reporting live in the newsroom, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. David Alicia. Thank you, Stephen. While Alicia and I have enjoyed bringing you the latest news this week in the morning, you may have noticed that Mark and Stephanie have been absent from GMSA. So we're checking in with both of them this morning. Let's take a listen. Hi, everybody. It's Mark from home. Uh, Truman hanging out back there. But I wanted to check in um, and say hello. I know you don't normally get to see me this way with my weekend look, but it's uh, during the week and we are in quarantine. Uh, just to be safe, uh, I am feeling fine and hope to be back very soon. I've been trying to keep myself busy here at home. I've been digging through old boxes, reluctantly, and actually stumbled across this. I painted it in high school. It was due in April of 1984 at Woodbridge High School in Woodbridge, Virginia. That's just crazy to stumble across that. Speaking of Virginia, uh, a state that I love, I'm reading Lynn Cheney's book, The Virginia Dynasty, about four of our U.S. presidents from the Commonwealth. Um, it's a good read. I want to finish The Crown, but I can't. I promised my girlfriend I wouldn't finish it without her, so the crown stays locked down for now. Um, that's about it from here. I just wanted to say hello. I miss everybody. Hope to be back very, very soon. Hi, guys. Just wanted to say hello. We're being told to stay home as a precaution, but I feel fine. My family feels fine. We're just at home uh, working on assignments for school and doing laundry. I hope you're doing well, especially after last week. But uh, just wanted to say a quick hello and that we miss you and can't wait to see you soon. Bye. Bye. Rooney is so adorable and glad to hear that. Homework and laundry? Hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I guess so. Especially when you're working from home. Well, Sorry, we're glad Steph. that both of them are doing well in their yeah, families. Good to see them. It's 509 and 52 degrees. Still ahead, we'll have the latest on TikTok paying millions of dollars to settle a case following the theft of personal data. And coming up next, we hear from Trinity University Professor Dr. Kerry Lattimore and his thoughts on the history of Black History Month. 
And taking a live look with live cam, steady traffic. It's going to be a pretty day if you like cloudy days. We'll be back. Chances are you've seen Trinity professor Carrie Lattimore on KSAT 12 before. Dr. Lattimore is an associate professor, historian, and author. He's been interviewed by many of our reporters to discuss our city's history and various other topics. But now we're getting to know some of Dr. Lattimore's history. He was commissioned by KSAT to write a column on the importance of Black History Month. I was thinking really about the beauty of it um, because you can really have almost like an artistic beauty to Black History Month and how you look at it. And I was thinking about the beauty of the family that I grew up in and how, you know, people shared with one another. Lattimore grew up in rural Virginia. He attended church with his family, where he learned the value of community and sharing with each other. He wrote about his father, who wasn't allowed to walk on one side of the street when he was a kid, and then decades later would become a magistrate of that same county. He did not let that destroy him. And so the same streets that he could not walk on or, or was pushed off of, in a sense, are the streets that he kind of has jurisdiction over later in his life. It's a story of overcoming. Like his father, mother, and many others that came before him, Dr. Lattimore feels the month is an opportunity to reflect on the unknown and unrecognized black heroes of the past and present. When you think about each of our families, you know, the families that we come from, we think of their experiences and the stories that they had to tell. In many ways, those stories are just as remarkable as the stories of the people that we've learned from from the past. But as a historian, Dr. Lattimore also writes about the complexity of black history. He says it is diverse and beautiful while also painful and haunting at the same time. His parents grew up in segregated schools, but they were not defined by racial tensions in the South. They fought hard to overcome, but to also not be in a sense kind of completely consumed by the negative because they wanted to transfer to me hope. And so that's a beautiful thing, too, that these people who went through extraordinary things inspired hope. Um, and, and, and I'm grateful for that. Visit KSAT.com for the full column titled The Beauty of Black History Month, where Kerry shares his thoughts on the perseverance and achievement of so many people in the community that shaped black history throughout generations. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. I always appreciate Dr. Lettermore's insights. Absolutely. Time right now, 515, 52 degrees. Still ahead, we're going to tell you a little bit about TikTok and how having to pay after being accused of stealing personal data from users. My plaque psoriasis, the itching, the burning. The stinging. My skin was no longer mine. My psoriatic arthritis made my joints stiff, swollen, painful. Emerge Trem Fiend. With Tremphia, adults with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis can uncover clearer skin and improve symptoms at 16 weeks. Tremphia is also approved for adults with active psoriatic arthritis. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Tremphia may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Tremphia. Emerge Tremphiant. Janssen can help you explore cost support options. Does your vitamin C last 24 hours? Only Nature's Bounty does. New Immune 24 Hour Plus has longer lasting vitamin C, plus herbal and other immune superstars. Only from Nature's Bounty. In today's Tech Bites, TikTok agrees to pay $92 million to settle dozens of lawsuits. The popular app accused of sharing private user data with outside parties, including some based in China. The money would go to actual TikTok users. The deal still needs court approval. Apple releasing an update to fix a charging problem that's destroying some of its laptops. The issue has been linked to later models of the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. The damage appears to take place when connected to third-party USB hubs and Docs. Finally, watch out Instagram. Here comes Dispo, a new photo sharing app that is meant to replicate using a disposable camera. Multiple users can take photos on the same roll. Everyone gets to see the pictures the next morning so they can find out what developed overnight. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. All right, we've had some rain and a little moisture. The question is, are the roads wet? Yes.
They are. They were this morning. <laughs> wow. Probably are. <laughs> Simple as that. Huh? They sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, things looking uh, okay uh, on the map. Some. Uh, some a little orange and uh, yellow here and there, including on a military near uh, uh, Lackland. So eight minutes between Old Pearsall and 35. So not the worst time in the world, but people are out and about this morning. So uh, that's a good thing. And taking a look at uh, 35 and Thousand Oaks, you can see uh, traffic there uh, beginning to build, but it is uh, flowing well this morning. So uh, not too bad if you're heading out right now. But of course, as we know, traffic builds and then we have problems later in the morning. So uh, we'll Keep an eye on that, guys. Thank you, Samuel. So is it still raining? <laughs> no, it's not did raining you, anymore. Did, you didn't sneak like a peek at the weather or anything? <laughs> no. You knew, the, you knew the roads were wet. David's got questions. We've got answers. Okay. That's what, what we do here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is it raining? Uh, no, not at the moment. It's okay. Not. Thank you. There, <laughs> there is a little bit of drizzle in spots, but not here in San Antonio. Hey, let's look at the drop monitor. Uh, it is still a bad situation as you go out across the western half of the country. You see all the reds and the maroon colors. That uh, represents extreme and exceptional drought. We're still dealing with some of that here in South Texas. We saw a little bit of improvement, but uh, we're still in a severe drought. That stretches basically from Canyon Lake all the way through Medina Lake down to Carrizo Springs, uh, even parts of Bear County in a severe drought. Bottom line, and we've said this for the better part of a year now, is we need some rain. There is a little bit in the forecast, especially as we get into Monday. Medina Lake just keeps dropping. It's down to 39% full, down 34 feet from the conservation pool. And about every month, we're losing a foot here. So we're going in the wrong direction. We need one of those you know, good, healthy rains. I, I, I don't know that Monday will be that, but we may get a quarter of an inch out of it, which uh, we'll certainly take. Outside right now, we've got cloudy skies, 50 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Still pretty chilly out there. And as far as uh, visibility goes, there has been no fog here in San Antonio. I don't anticipate a ton of issues with fog here in town, but there will be some spots where visibility comes down. Rock Springs, for example, down to a mile and a half. Kerrville down to about three miles. Everybody else at this point doing okay. So here's where it gets a little tricky today. We've got a, a frontal battery that's draped across the area. We saw this yesterday. It's pulled up stationary. So anyone south of that boundary is going to see some pretty warm temperatures today. Anyone to the north of it's going to see cooler numbers. Uh, San Antonio probably stays on the north side of this boundary. So we'll be right around uh, 60 degrees this afternoon. Pretty close to where we were yesterday. Kerrville 62, 61 in Honda this afternoon. But places like Beeville could, up, could get close to 80. Uh, just to show you the difference there, and there will be some warmer temperatures, I think, out west, too. Specifically for San Antonio, we're going to keep things cloudy with maybe a few breaks in those clouds this afternoon. Again, up around 60 for a high with a northerly wind anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Big picture here, some good rain up across northeast Texas. We just sort of missed out. We had about 500 of an inch officially at the airport with some light showers. But the really good heavy rain is now up across parts of northeast Texas and Arkansas. And our forecast basically just calls for some mostly cloudy skies today. As we get into tomorrow, outside chance for shower, certainly can't rule it out, 20% chance, but uh, mostly cloudy conditions as well by the afternoon. Sunday rain chances increase a little bit, but they really start to pick up late Sunday night into Monday morning as another frontal boundary comes in. We can see some thunderstorms of this too. That's something I wanna watch uh, late Sunday night. And then uh, Monday, we should see some widespread shower activity, which, I, as I mentioned, it may add up to a quarter of an inch in some cases, uh, maybe a half an inch as you go north of San Antonio, and then some better totals up by 35. Extended forecast, 74 on your Saturday, mostly cloudy, 75 Sunday. Keep in mind, we can see some fog and drizzle each and every morning through Sunday. And then cooler behind that front, 59, 60% chance of rain Monday, and that'll hold over into Tuesday morning as well. Guys. Well, here's the good news for you. You've answered all my questions. Good. At least for now. Good. I'll think of some new ones. I'm sure As you always. will. As always. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Time right now, 524, 52, 52 degrees. Ooh. Hey, coming up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at Pixar's newest film opening in June and highlights of a special Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony. Welcome back. It's 526. Today in entertainment news, a Pixar sneak peek and an online Walk of Fame ceremony. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. But there's just one thing. <sighs> uh -oh. 
whoa, whoa. Wait, D did you see that? No one can find out. Here's your first look at Disney and Pixar's Luca, about friends whose summer on the Italian Riviera can only be ruined if people discover they're really sea monsters from another world. Luca opens in June. This really is incredible. Oscar-winning costume designer Ruth E. Carter has been inducted into the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The Walk's 2,694th star is just the second ever to go to a costume designer. The virtual ceremony included messages from Oprah Winfrey and Eddie Murphy, and even a look at how the star was made. You can watch the entire ceremony on the Walk of Fame's YouTube channel. Not far from Carter's star in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's kind of amazing, only two costume designers to get a Hollywood Walk of Fame. And then to be able to see it like that, kind of yeah. behind the scenes, that's very cool. Interesting. 528, 52 degrees. Still ahead, the latest on a COVID-19 vaccine as medical experts warn of a fourth surge and lawmakers get ready to take up the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill. Plus, good news for... Sephora. Sephora customers. That's makeup, right? That's right. See? Okay, more details on their plans to open more freestanding stores in Texas. If you are just waking up, your alarm's going off. It is 531 and it is Friday. Friday. Oh, aren't we so happy it's finally Friday. I'm excited. Ooh, are you? Yes. Pumped. Especially Pumped because it's not going to be raining all day. It's just that drizzle in the morning. Not any fog. Justin? You're right. It's going to be a good day. I think so. I mean, it's going to be a little cool. The temperatures will be around 60, but mostly cloudy skies. We're not looking for much rain today. You're right, Alicia. And tomorrow, probably same story. So Saturday is going to look pretty good, too. Warmer as well. 70 is on your Saturday. Pollen count is in. Mold is low. Mount Cedar is low. Actually, we will get new numbers here in a couple of hours, but I suspect that they'll be pretty similar. Uh, we're not looking for much of a change in Palm County. It's, we're kind of in between seasons right now. 45 degrees comfort, 45 Bernie stage, 50 at Randolph, 59 Pleasanton. And you see the, the big spread in temperatures here. It only gets worse as we zoom out. 43 Fredericksburg, but it's 68 in Corpus Christi. We've got a frontal boundary that stretches across the area. It's pulled up stationary, so we'll see a wide range in temperatures today. San Antonio, though, staying on the cool side of things likely, with highs only around 60. Uh, there is a little bit of fog out there, although so far it hasn't been a big problem. The lowest visibility I'm seeing is out near Rock Springs, where it's mile and a half. Forecast for today, some fog and drizzle early. Can't rule that out. Temperatures will climb into the mid-50s by noontime, likely staying cloudy. few breaks, though, possible this afternoon. And again, we're up around 60 degrees for a high today. We did pick up a little bit of rain overnight. There were some wet roads earlier, though it looks like things are drying out a little bit. Samuel, any issues this morning? Not too many uh, issues right now, Justin, as we take a look at uh, Transkai 281 at Hildebrand. Uh, looking fine, traffic picking up a little bit, but you mentioned there was some little rain in slick spots overnight, so watch out for that uh, on the roads this morning. The map looks green and good. Let's take you out to close to the Medical Center area in Fredericksburg Road here. Evener and Woodlawn are normal time, 14, 15 minutes each way, so that's good. And looking at some travel times, if you're coming into San Antonio from around the region, at Bernie, 25 minutes on I-10 into downtown San Antonio, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle, 26 minutes from New Braunfels on 35, and 10 minutes into downtown from Seguin, uh, uh, not, not 10 minutes, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin. We'll have another update coming up. David, Alicia. All right, Samuel, thank you. Late breaking news now. We want to get you to the latest on a high speed chase that just wrapped up on the far west side. It all ended at 1604 in Dove Canyon. That's where Katrina Rubber is live with the latest. Katrina, good morning. Well, good morning. Yeah, this was a quite a chase. It, pretty much a loop around the city. It lasted probably about 20 minutes, covered many miles, including three highways and several city streets. But this is the end of the road, this access road uh, for three people. San Antonio police say that they took three young people, uh, younger than 16 years old, into custody after this car uh, just wrecked out right here. Uh, actually, the, the tires were flattened when Bear County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff's deputies helped with spike strips. Now this car, according to police, was stolen earlier in the evening. Officers spotted it driving around town, tried to stop it, but the driver uh, took them on a chase. They ended up on Loop 410, to I-10 to 1604 and then finally that is where they hit the spike strips right around Petrenko 
and then uh, ended their ride here, got out and tried to run, but police did take those people into custody. Uh, they say that the owner of this car did suffer some injuries in that robbery earlier in the evening. Uh, he, they, he was hit over the head with a gun, but uh, it was a minor injury. But police have recovered the car, although not in the shape that it was in when it was taken. And they also have three people in custody as a result of what happened here. Reporting live on the far west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. As medical experts warn of another potential surge of COVID-19 cases here in the U.S., lawmakers are getting ready to vote on the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill. The House bill vote on the bill vote today. But as Britt Conway reports, there is a key element that the Senate plans to remove. This is an unemployment line in Florida. The American people are, are struggling. President Joe Biden is hoping his $1.9 trillion COVID relief package will help. And the House votes on it today. It's as sweeping as it is controversial. Republicans say it's too big. Some calling it a, quote, liberal wish list. This is the wrong plan at the wrong time for all the wrong reasons. What would they have me cut? How much time do you have, Mr. President, to go through the litany of things in this bill that have nothing to do with COVID? But Democrats argue it's all related to the pandemic. We are still in a historic crisis of health, of the economy. COVID-19 pandemic is a once in a century tragedy. It requires a once in a century congressional response. So what does it include? $1,400 stimulus checks for millions of Americans, enhanced unemployment assistance, nutrition assistance, housing aid, boosted tax credits for families and workers, optional paid sick and family leave, funding for education and child care, health insurance subsidies, more money for small businesses, billions in aid to states, and increased support for vaccines and testing. But one item that won't be in the Senate version is the $15 federal minimum wage hike. It's a disappointment for many Democrats, but it might be the cut needed to get the bill across the finish line. We've got to pass it and make sure it gets uh, implemented as soon as possible. I'm Britt Conway reporting. President Joe Biden is making a stop in the Lone Star State today amid the aftermath of last week's winter weather. The president and first lady are expected to travel to Houston later today. The White House says the president will meet with local leaders to discuss the winter storm, relief efforts and progress towards recovery. The president also plans to visit a COVID health center where vaccines are being distributed. The Biden administration has opened an emergency facility southwest of San Antonio for undocumented immigrant teens who have been separated from their families. The facility is in Carrizo Springs. It'll house up to 700 children and they can make room for more. While in care, case managers will work to place the teens with a sponsor in the U.S., like a parent or a relative. According to the government, the numbers of unaccompanied children crossing the border into the United States from Mexico has been rising since January. Well, time right now, 538, a chilly 51 degrees. Still coming up, an ex-USA gymnastics coach found dead after being charged with human trafficking. More details on the way. And a live look with live cam. A little, it looks a little foggy, or maybe it's just the camera. 51 degrees, we'll be back with more. Former Team USA gymnastics coach John Gettert, who was facing human trafficking and sex crime charges, is now dead. The ex-coach was expected to turn himself in and be arraigned this Thursday afternoon. Melissa Rainey has the latest details. We are announcing 24 charges against John Gettert. Former Olympic gymnastics coach John Getter taking his own life just after Michigan's attorney general announced he was being charged with 24 felony counts. These allegations focus around multiple acts of verbal, physical and sexual abuse perpetrated by the defendant against multiple victims. The charges announced Thursday include 20 counts of human trafficking and two counts of criminal sexual conduct. Gettert led the 2012 U.S. Olympic women's gymnastics team and was the former owner of Michigan's famed Twist Stars Gymnastics Club, a club where former gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser admitted to sexually abusing young female athletes. Nasser was sentenced in 2018 to up to 175 years in prison. Some gymnasts speaking about Gettert then. There isn't one bone in my body that doesn't hate John Gettert for everything he has done to me in my career. The dynamic duo that is Larry Nassar and John Gettert had lasting effects on me 
that go beyond physical ones. Sarah Klein, who identified herself as the first to be abused by Nasser, released a statement Thursday saying in part, John Gettert's escape from justice by committing suicide is traumatizing beyond words. Michigan's attorney general saying this is a tragic end to a tragic story for everyone involved. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. It's now 542 and 51 degrees. And next, how Pepsi is trying to be part of your at-home cocktail mixing experience. Welcome back in your morning consumer headlines. Hyundai is recalling 82,000 electric ca cars globally. The vehicle's batteries need to be replaced after 15 reports of car fires. No one was hurt in any of the fires and none actually took place here in the United States. However, the recall is one of the most expensive in history. Replacing an entire battery on an electric car is an extreme measure on a per vehicle basis. The average cost is $11,000 per car. It will cost Hyundai about $900 million total. Beauty product sales may have tanked during the pandemic, but one retailer is betting on a comeback. Sephora plans to open more than 60 new freestanding stores in the U.S. this year. Most of them will not be in shopping malls, though. The future locations include several cities here in Texas. That's on top of about 200 mini stores that Sephora will open in Kohl's department stores. Combined, that makes the company's biggest U.S. expansion in 21 years. Makeup sales have dropped by 34 percent in the U.S. last year, but Sephora is still hoping to capitalize in the future partly by focusing on suburban and off-mall locations. And Pepsi apparently wants to be part of your at-home cocktail experience. The soda company has launched a new line of mixers called Neon Zebra. The mixers feature four flavors. You see them there that each come in seven and a half ounce can. They are non-alcoholic, so you will have to add the alcohol to make your margarita, daiquiri, or mojito. The cans are sold in six packs for about seven or eight dollars per pack neon zebra is expected to hit stores on march 1st so just in time for spring break awesome and just in time for spring break sea world's looking for some help looking for a job here you go the park needs to fill 500 part-time and seasonal positions some of these jobs come with a 200 dollars signing bonus they include jobs in park operations food service and maintenance lifeguards also needed if you're interested in applying, we've got more information for you right there on our website. Just go to ksat.com. We're already talking summertime jobs. Or spring break jobs. Or spring break jobs, maybe. It's the time. But man, got here quick. <laughs> Very. Speaking of quick, how fast can you go on the roads? <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment, but you might need some extra cash if you're going to pay for gas. Uh, if you got used to some Ooh. of the low prices we've had over the past uh, a year or so that has changed mostly because of the winter storm according to AAA Texas a lot of refineries of course went offline last week and they're getting back in production but the damage has been done a uh, 234 in uh, Bear County just a couple weeks ago it was 216 240 average price across Texas 269 across the United States Bear County though that has the lowest average gas price in the state so that's something uh, for us but right now you're not going to be using too much gas idling we do have a stalled vehicle here at 90 and couples but it's not really affecting travel times too much on 90 between 6 and 04 and 35 11 minutes there and here's a look at transguide 37 at 181 looks a little worse than it is in terms of the fog down there but uh, 35 at pine looking fine but as you see traffic is picking up and building guys Thank you, Samuel. And Justin is, is ready. <laughs> you okay over there? Him, right? Yeah. Okay. No, you. Well, okay. Good. Fine. I'm yeah. good. Okay. I'm good. looking at that impressive. I know, I know it's Friday, y'all. It's Friday. <laughs> what, is, what is that? It looks like a, but that could be a UFO back there. Yeah, it kind of. Right. Isn't that cool? Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Rob, Rob takes some great pictures. Uh, he sent this in. The fog is hanging over south down as you look at the tower there. The, I think this is from yesterday. Not as much fog today, but I love that shot. And it really does show that uh, it's been sort of a foggy, murky stretch here. We had a little bit of that this morning. Some light rain fell here in San Antonio, but now we're just looking at cloudy skies. 50 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. Dew point is at 48. But you'll notice the temperature dew point pretty close together, so there is a chance we could see fog develop, at least briefly this morning. Rain overnight, it was not plentiful. We got about 500 of an inch officially at the airport, but places like Gonzales, he did pick up 1,800ths hundredths of an inch, LaGrange 1,400ths of an inch, New Braunfels about 400ths of an inch, so the numbers weren't huge. 
but at least it's a little bit of something. I think we'll have some better rain chances as we get into Monday of next week. Temperature wise 44 in Kerrville, 45 Comfort, 50 in New Braunfels, 52 Stinson. There's still a wide range of temperatures across the area thanks to a stalled out frontal battery. And uh, it's 69 in Victoria, but it's 43 in Fredericksburg. So you see the range here and uh, San Antonio is kind of caught in the middle. We're at 50 degrees and that frontal battery is going to stay in place today. I think we'll probably stay on the cool side of things. You'll see some much warmer numbers down to the south and east this afternoon. Visibility, we mentioned there, there is some fog out there. It's not really all that bad. Places like Rock Springs looking at visibility down about a mile and a half, but most everybody else is doing just fine. Forecast temperatures, we mentioned that big spread. I think we'll be up around 60 here in town, some 50s, maybe around New Braunfels. As you go west, the numbers will increase 71 Rock Springs, 72 Del Rio, and as you go south and east, some big numbers, 77. The potential high in Beeville today. For San Antonio specifically, I think we're cloudy through midday and then maybe a few breaks this afternoon. That'll get temperatures up close to 60 degrees. Uh, that little uh, amount of rain we saw overnight was thanks to a storm system which is now pushing east. Brought some very heavy rain, some thunderstorms in Dallas, now pushing into parts of Arkansas. That's moving away, and that's why I think things will be fairly quiet today and probably tomorrow too, although we're still in a pretty active pattern. Another upper level low piece of energy moves in by the uh, by Sunday night and that starts to increase our rain chances again. Not to mention we've got some good moisture coming out of the Pacific. So this typically bodes well for us. And as we look at the future cast again, not much today. This is around six o'clock, mostly cloudy skies. Tomorrow we'll start off with some fog and drizzle, maybe a couple of showers. And then just like today, mostly cloudy during the afternoon. Sunday, I think our rain chances increase a little bit, especially Sunday night and then early Monday morning. We'll start to get some showers and maybe even a few thunderstorms around the area. We'll have to watch for that. There's enough instability there. And I think Monday is going to be a fairly wet day with showers around. So the extended forecast here, 60 today, 74 tomorrow, just a 20% chance of rain. Your Saturday should be fine after some morning fog and drizzle. And then on Sunday, a 30% chance of rain with some morning fog and drizzle as well. And then we've got that 60% chance of rain in the forecast Monday into Tuesday. And temperatures will cool down once again after being in the 70s over the weekend. So interesting way to start your week was a big downpour next week. Yeah, Monday's going to be uh, a little gloomy, I'm afraid. Hey, if it brings some good rain, that's all right. Exactly. We I agree with it. Yep. 552, 51 degrees. And got to catch them all. The Pokemon Media Empire is celebrating its 25th anniversary this weekend. We'll have a preview next. All right, let's check out some lottery numbers before we go to break. Pick three, six, eight, two, fireball zero, and your daily four is zero, one, eight, zero, fireball is nine. Cash five, one, 12, 21, 28, 31, and the Texas two-step, two, 13, 24, 26, fireball, 16. first arrived in 1996, spawning a global entertainment empire encompassing video games, trading cards, animation, and more. I never would have guessed we would be here today, after 25 years. This year marks the franchise's 25th anniversary. Among the first events celebrating Pokemon is a virtual concert by Pokefan Post Malone. The show will be live streamed Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern at 25.pokemon.com. As fans anxiously await news and announcements from the world of Pokemon, one new game we know details about is New Pokemon Snap. The Photo Safari gameplay is a modernization of the popular Nintendo 64 game. The updated version hits the Nintendo Switch on April 30th. While February 27th is considered Pokemon Day, the celebration is expected to last the year. In Hollywood, and still trying to catch them all after 25 years, I'm Rick Damagella. KSAC community teaming up with local nonprofits to help San Antonians recover from the aftermath of last week's winter storm. Right now on our website, we have a list of city services available for people who need aid if you are a, in a position to help others. We also have a list of organizations you can donate to. You can find it 
right there on ksatcommunity.com, once again, on our website. And another way you can help out is by donating blood. Our KSAT Community Partner, University Health, hosting a blood drive on Monday and Tuesday. It's happening at the Witte Museum from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. Appointments are required. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, all you have to do is call the number on your screen, 210-358-2812, or you can visit ksatcommunity.com once again. All right, we're going to come back next hour with more news, traffic, and weather. But as we go to break, I want to tell you that as Black History Month is coming to an end, we are learning more from our leaders in the community. One of those leaders is Trinity Professor Kerry Lattimore. Ahead on GMSA, we're going to hear about his experiences and why he says black history is so important. And there's a look at the roads as we go to break. The traffic update from Samuel coming up along with weather from Justin. And we've got more news for you on the way. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. One man fighting for his life in the hospital this morning after police say he was ejected from a car overnight. We've got the details on what led up to that ejection. Critical conversations being had in the classroom. Coming up this morning on GMSA, we'll hear more about an African-American studies course that's being incorporated into curriculums. And taking a live look outside with live cam. It looks good out there, 51 degrees. Happy Friday. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning, all together now. It is Friday. Friday. That wasn't bad. February 26th is the date, and we are excited because it's Friday, and boy, do we deserve a Friday. Yes, Ooh, we do. are Thank we glad you. to be here. Thank you for starting your morning with us. Yeah, and a little, uh, you know, a little rain here, a little drizzle here, a little this, a little that, but it's all right. It's, it's all good. It's okay. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's, it's, all, it's good. all good. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll see some cloud cover today. I don't think we'll see a lot of rain. We'll see some clouds tomorrow, but all in all, pretty good weekend. And then some rain chances, uh, good rain chances on Monday. So that's what we have to look forward to. Temperatures across the state right now. We've got a big spread, 24 in Amarillo. It's 70 in Brownsville. you got to love Texas because a lot of real estate here, and we can get a lot of difference in temperatures. But that's because there's a frontal boundary that uh, snakes through our viewing area. And right now we're on the cool side of things. 50 here in San Antonio, 47 in Waco, 70 though in Houston. They're on the other side of that boundary. Uh, as far as rain goes, we picked up a little bit overnight. Most of the rain's starting to move out though, and uh, looks like we'll see a fairly rain-free day, minus a little bit of drizzle and uh, maybe some mist and fog this morning. 52 degrees, 8 o'clock, 53, 10 o'clock, 55 noon time. I think we're still cloudy, but maybe some breaks this afternoon. That again should get that temperature up close to 60. Pretty good weekend. We have some slight rain chances both Saturday and Sunday, but those good rain chances, as I mentioned, arrive early next week. We'll get into that with the seven day forecast here in just a bit, but let's talk roads now. So far, the morning commute for a Friday, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we had, you know, you mentioned that we had that rain overnight, Justin, but things are looking fine. At, here's 281 at Hildebrand. Traffic, of course, is building uh, as more people get out and about earlier as we've been advancing here in the year, but things are looking fine on the uh, big map here. No uh, real incidents uh, to report, just some orange and yellow here and there. Let's take a look at 35 once you're inside 410, starting on the northeast side here, 10 minutes uh, each way between 410 and downtown, and going to the southwest here, also 10 minutes each way. So that is looking good on 35 for now. We'll see if that changes. Also around town, 35 coming in from Lytle into downtown 17 minutes coming in from New Braunfels 26 minutes 29 minutes uh, from two on 281 from Bolverde and we'll have another update coming up David Alicia thank you Samuel speaking of updates we want to get you back to that late breaking news that happened on the far west side we brought it to you last half hour it was a high speed chase that ended near loop 1604 and Dove Canyon Katrina Weber is live on the scene with the latest details from police Katrina well, good morning. Uh, you can see things look a lot different from how they were earlier when we had just dozens of police cars here, along with a car that they say was stolen. Uh, that was the car that led them on the chase. Let me give you a look at the video from a little bit earlier today. A uh, police started chasing this car uh, a little bit after four o'clock this morning. They say that car had been stolen from a man earlier in the evening, a man in a motel room who was hit over the head with a gun. A uh, police spotted the car, tried to stop it, it led them on a chase uh, along three different highways, ending here at Loop 1604 near Petranco. That's where Bear County Sheriff's deputies assisted with a spike strip, got the car to stop. Police quickly caught up with two 
uh, of two males and a female who were in there, all teenagers under the age of 16, according to police. They were taken into custody uh, and are facing charges now. Uh, police tell us that the man who actually owns this car, well, he suffered some injuries. He was left in that hotel room bleeding from a head injury uh, after he was hit over the head with a gun. But uh, he should be okay. Police do have the car back in, but it is in a lot worse shape than it was when it was taken from him, from him earlier. Reporting live on the far west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, new this morning, San Antonio police say a man is in the hospital after he was ejected from his car. It happened around 1.30 this morning at the intersection of Caliza Drive and Marin Hills. That's on the far north side near Highway 281 in Evans. Police say the driver lost control of the car, jumped the median on Caliza. The vehicle landed on the sidewalk on the other side of the road, and the driver was thrown from the car. Police say he was taken to University Hospital, where he is in critical condition. And the head of ERCOT, the operator of the state's electric grid, testified again last night in front of both the Texas House and Senate. The joint hearing lasted all day with various energy leaders speaking about the power issues caused by the winter storm. ERCOT President Bill Magnus started by giving a timeline of the events and how they prepared. He says they expected rolling outages in the beginning, but started experiencing high power demand on Sunday the 14th. Governor Greg Abbott has called reforming ERCOT an emergency item during this legislative session. To the pandemic now, local health officials reporting 404 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. They're also telling us that four more people have died from the virus. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says there is not a seven day rolling average for this week because of the lack of testing from the winter storm that didn't provide enough data for that seven day rolling average. The mayor says we can't expect to know the seven day average next week. He also says there will be 10,000 Pfizer vaccines coming to the Alamo City for first dose appointments next week as well. And speaking of the vaccine, the city of San Antonio says 30,000 people have already signed up for text alerts that show which of our local providers have the shots. But the system doesn't include every place that's offering that vaccine. Right now, alerts are only tied to the University Health, WellMed, and Alamo Dome mass vaccination sites. Not included at this point are HEB or CVS. Members with CVS and HEB say they are getting the doses through a federal program. To apply for their open slots, you have to keep an eye on their websites. The U.S. could have authorization to begin administering a third COVID-19 vaccine in just a few days. Food and Drug Administration advisors are scheduled to meet today to review the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. If they recommend it, the agency could sign off on it today or tomorrow. Then it goes to the CDC, where advisors plan to meet about it on Sunday. FDA analysts already indicate Johnson & Johnson has met requirements for emergency youth authorization. Research shows the single dose vaccine is about 66% effective. And this next story goes beyond Black History Month. A new African American Studies course is making its way into the classroom, and educators hope it will make a difference in the lives of students. Stephen Cavazos is live in the newsroom this morning. And Stephen, what's the overall goal with this with this uh, studies? Hey, good morning, David, Alicia. Well, the goal is to not only help these students see themselves reflected in our country's histories, but to help them have the critical conversations that will take our country's future forward. Now, it did take a team of historians, educators, and policymakers to get this course off the ground. Now, the courses are being offered right now at San Antonio ISD and Judson ISD, and Northeast ISD will soon incorporate them into their curriculum. Now, I did speak to Lauren Scott, who is an assistant professor of education at Texas A&M San Antonio. He also played a big part in get in this course into the classrooms. He says the goal is not just to teach students about civil rights icons like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Harriet Tubman, but help them understand the economic disparities, wage and opportunity gaps. Everyone understands that we have to start having some real uh, cogent, critical conversations about race and equity with real data. Now, NEISD will have a total of six high schools that will offer the course. Now, coming up later on GMSA, more on the impact that these experts hope to make in the classroom and beyond. Reporting live in the newsroom, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. David, Alicia. Thank you, Stephen. And a little update for you. Alicia and I have enjoyed bringing you the latest news all week long. Of course, you may have noticed that uh, Mark and Stephanie are not here. 
So we're checking in with both of them this morning to make sure they're doing okay. Take a listen. Hi, everybody. It's Mark from home. Uh, Truman hanging out back there, but I wanted to check in um, and say hello. I know you don't normally get to see me this way with my weekend look, but it's uh, during the week and we are in quarantine. Uh, just to be safe, uh, I am feeling fine and hope to be back very soon. I've been trying to keep myself busy here at home. I've been digging through old boxes reluctantly and actually stumbled across this. I painted it in high school. It was due in April of 1984 at Woodbridge High School in Woodbridge, Virginia. That's just crazy to stumble across that. Speaking of Virginia, uh, a state that I love, I'm reading Lynn Cheney's book, The Virginia Dynasty, about four of our U.S. presidents from the Commonwealth. Um, it's a good read. I want to finish The Crown, but I can't. I promised my girlfriend I wouldn't finish it without her, so the crown stays locked down for now. Um, that's about it from here. I just wanted to say hello. I miss everybody. Hope to be back very, very soon. Hi guys, just wanted to say hello. We're being told to stay home as a precaution, but I feel fine, my family feels fine. We're just at home uh, working on assignments for school and doing laundry. I hope you're doing well, especially after last week, but uh, just wanted to say a quick hello and that we miss you and can't wait to see you soon. Bye. Bye. I want to know what Rooney's color in there, drawing. And I'm sure Rooney is enjoying the extra time <laughs> with mom and dad at home. So glad to glad to hear that they're doing yeah, well. They should be back pretty soon. All right, it's 610, it's 51 degrees. And if you have an Apple computer, don't use a third-party USB dock. We'll tell you about a crucial update you should download first. And also coming up after the break, we continue our series on Black History Month. We will learn how Douglas High School plays a role in San Antonio's history. And taking a live look outside with live cam. Right now it's 51 degrees, traffic is picking up, things are looking good, and the best thing, it's Friday. We'll be back with more. The first school for African Americans in San Antonio was built in the late 1860s, just a few years after the Civil War ended. The two-story, four-room building was reportedly built with $4,000 from the sale of an abandoned tannery. It opened in 1871 as the Riverside School for Students of All Ages, located on Recon, which we now call St. Mary Street. In 1904, the name changed to Frederick Douglass School, named after the famous abolitionist. Ten years later, the school moved to what is now Martin Luther King Drive after members of the African-American community pushed for more educational opportunities for their children. The school continued to grow, and in 1933, the newer, more modern Phyllis Wheatley High School was built. That was the last graduating class of Douglas High School. The school turned into an elementary in 1969 and went under a complete $9.3 million renovation between 2002 and 2006. Today, it's known as Frederick Douglass Academy and teaches students pre-K through eighth grade. I had a little moisture on the roads this morning. But by the time you go home today, it won't be an issue. It's probably not an issue now, right? Maybe not. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's check in with Sam. Lots of green. Yes. Let me look at the map here. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Lots, Lots of, of green. green. I mean, some of this stuff is normal, but uh, for the most part, uh, we're looking fine on a Friday morning, which is a good thing uh, for everyone. Let's uh, go up here uh, to I-10 first, uh, 25 minutes each way between uh, downtown and Bernie, and between 1604 and Bernie. 14 minutes, so that's looking good. And let's go over here to uh, the north side, 281. Eight minutes heading uh, southbound from Boverde Road to 1604, and then seven minutes uh, northbound. A little yellow there, but it could be a lot worse, as we know. And here's Transguide. That was 35 at Thousand Oaks. Traffic building there. Traffic building on the southeast side, too, at 37 and 181. But uh, traffic is one thing, but as long as it's flowing, that's a good thing for everyone. So now would be, if you have to head out to work, now would be a good time to do so, guys. All right, Samuel, thank you very much. Look pretty good out there because it's, it's not raining right now. It's not raining, yeah. and it's not going to be like that till Monday. Right now it's going to be cloudy, yep. which I love, <laughs> but probably David not a fan. Cloudy and cool. A little sun wouldn't hurt. Listen, uh, you know, we'll, we'll soak this in because in a couple of months we'll be talking about 90s and sun and drought and all that sort of thing. You know, the drought's still here, despite the fact we have gotten some precipitation Last couple of weeks, we're going to get some more, I think, probably as we get into next week. But there's this, this, this situation, and it is really bad for the western half of the country. Uh, the, the drought has been there for the better part of a year. 
and we're still seeing it here in South Texas. Just not as bad. You see the orange color here that represents a severe drought that stretches from northern Bear County, Canyon Lake, down the Medina Lake, Crystal City, Carrizo Springs. That's sort of the corridor where we just can't get enough rain. We can't seem to overcome uh, the deficit that we have in place. And Medina Lake, 39% full, down 34 feet. It's down another foot over the last month. It continues to fall. Outside right now, we've got cloudy skies. Temperature is sitting at 50 degrees. North northeasterly winds at about 12 miles per hour, so it feels a little chilly out there. It is jacket weather this morning, I think, and you may even still want it during the afternoon. We mentioned that there was some rain overnight. Wasn't a lot, but it did add up to about five hundredths of an inch at the airport, four hundredths of an inch in New Braunfels, and close to two tenths of an inch in Gonzales. You were the big winner overnight with some of these showers. Now the heavier rain is up around the Dallas area. They're still seeing some thunderstorms. Visibility is not a problem here in Bear County. There's a couple of spots that we're watching Rock Springs. We've seen Gonzales kind of fluctuate a little bit there, but all in all, fog has not been uh, just a big problem. Humidity tracker shows the dew points are pretty high down to the south. Uh, it's south of a stationary boundary, so dew points are in the 60s. It's humid, but up to the north, those dew points are quite a bit lower, and so are the temperatures. 50 degrees at the airport, 44 Kerrville, 41 Rock Springs, 51 in Uvalde. South of that boundary, still in the mid-60s around Bevo and uh, Corpus, even close to 70 in Victoria. So there's going to be another big range in temperatures today because that boundary is, is there. And I think here in San Antonio, we're only up to about 60 today, which is about where we were yesterday. But Bevo could get up as high as 77. I think we'll see some warmer numbers out west too, 72 in Del Rio, probably because they see a little more sun out there. Cloud cover is going to hold here in San Antonio for much of the day. That being said, I think we could see a few breaks this afternoon, which will help to boost those temperatures some. I mentioned the heavy rains up there around Dallas. Starting to move away, though, a lot of the energy is moving east, and that means our rain chances going, are going away too. So most of your Friday is quiet, just mostly cloudy. Saturday, we start off with some fog and drizzle. There could be a shower or two, but very similar to today in the sense that we'll get mostly cloudy skies during the afternoon. And then by Sunday, rain chances pick up a little bit. Best chance, though, is going to be overnight Sunday, Sunday overnight into early Monday morning. We'll get a frontal battery in here. That could produce some thunderstorms, too. We'll have to watch for the prospect of maybe a couple of strong storms. That's not out of the realm of possibility. And then by the time we get into Monday, just some showers around the area. And we could see some decent rain out of this, maybe up to half an inch in some spots, quarter of an inch here around San Antonio, and then you'll see some higher numbers off to the north and east. Extended forecast looks like this. 60 today, 74 tomorrow, mostly cloudy. 75 Sunday, cloudy skies. Fog and drizzle possible each and every morning through Sunday. Then a 60% chance of showers after that front comes through. 59 on Monday, 60 on Tuesday with some clearing late, guys. So Monday could be a little bit of a mess, but we need some rain really bad because we don't want to head on into the summer with, you know, nothing happening. Completely agree. We need as much rain as we can get at this point. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 620, 51 degrees. The classic Hasbro toy, Mr. Potato Head, will now be rebranded as General Neutral. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. For every idea out there that gets the love it should, there are five more that don't succeed and so are lost for good. And some of them are pretty flawed. And some of them are slightly odd. But many are small businesses that simply lack the tool to find excited people who will stop and say, That's cool. And these two, they like this idea. And those three like that one. And that's cause personalized ads. Find good ideas for everyone. Welcome to the Quaker Breakfast Table, where new normals are created and where you watch them grow up. Here, simple whole grains are easy to enjoy. So grab life by the spoon or cup and nourish it. Quaker Oats. Ordinary tissues burn when Theo blows. So Dad bought Puffs Plus Lotion and rescued his nose. With up to 50% more lotion, Puffs brings soothing softness and relief. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, goodbye, Mr. Hello, Potato Head. You gotta keep them together because they're madly in love. Sprouting up this fall, a new storyline. Get ready for simply Potato Head, the Hasbro company rebranding with a gender neutral name. They're making a statement in the entire toy industry saying, this is the world we live in right now. The norms are different, and we actually applaud that. The popular toy brand set to release a Create Your Own Potato Head family, a set that will include two large potato bodies, a small child potato, and more than 40 different accessories, which will allow children to mix, match, and create the family structure they want. Coming up at 7 a.m., all the reactions coming in overnight, plus a look at the other iconic brands also working to become more inclusive. With your GMA First Look, I'm Deborah Roberts, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer news, TikTok has agreed to pay a $92 million settlement with the, because of dozens of lawsuits. The popular app was accused of sharing private user data with outside parties, including some based in China. The money would go to actual TikTok users. The deal still needs court approval. And the late start to the tax filing season is slowing down refunds. As of February 19th, over $47 billion have been sent back to taxpayers. But by that day last year, the IRS had already sent back more than $100 billion. But the start of this year's tax filing season was also pushed back by about two weeks. And Apple releasing an update to fix a charging problem. It's destroying some of its laptops. The issue has been linked to later models of the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. The damage appears to take place when connected to third-party USB hubs and docks. And watch out Instagram. Here comes Dispo. It's a new photo sharing app that's meant to replicate a disposable camera. Looks pretty cool. Multiple users can take photos on the same roll. Then everyone gets to see the pictures, but they have to wait until the next morning. You can find out what developed. Oh, that way you can find out what developed overnight. Actually, I was telling you, I downloaded it. And you downloaded it? Seems... You know, if you had a Polaroid, you could find out instantly what your picture looks like. Yes, but this replicates the disposable camera, so even with a real-life disposable, you'd have to wait a couple of weeks. But I don't know. It I'm, just seems a little confusing. I'm telling you, the Polaroid, where did they go? 626, 51 degrees. You snap it, and the little picture comes right out, and you wait for yeah, a minute. You, you got a Polaroid camera? Yes. Wow. They're, they're back in. They're, they're awesome. the thing. Good. President Joe Biden will be in Texas today. He's scheduled to discuss winter storm relief efforts across the state while he's in Houston. Access Road marked the end of the road for three teenagers who police say were on the run after a robbery and chase. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. A new African-American studies course is being incorporated into school curriculums. Coming up later on GMSA, we'll hear how experts hope that this will take the conversations in the classroom to the next level. This morning, the Biden administration launches its first military strike targeting buildings in Syria. I'm Micah Jachi in Washington. Coming up, why the Biden administration decided to launch this strike. And outside with live cam looks pretty good right now. I got a little mix of this and that going on today and on into the weekend. Justin Horne's got your forecast coming up. It Happy. is Friday. Happy Friday. More energy, David. You've been like hyping us up all, all day. It's Friday. How about that? Oh, oh man, I'm pumped. Who Friday. knew you had it in you? Huh? Who knew you had it in you, that I, energy, this early? I'm fired up for Friday. After what we've been through last week and again this week. Oh, and then we get a little break. It's going to be cloudy, but you are going to get some sun, right, Justin? Yeah, you know, I think we may see a few peaks of sun this afternoon and tomorrow, but cloudy skies, at least to start. It's good napping weather. If if you can't take a nap today, I know David's <laughs> got that in the schedule sometime in the next couple of days. Uh, 45 degrees, Bernie Stage, 48 Boulevard, 50 New Braunfels, 50 Stinson, 51 Hondo. We've still got a, a huge spread in temperatures across the area because of a stationary boundary. So you've got 40s up in the hill country, and then you've got 60s, upper 60s down along the coast. And that'll stay around today because this boundary is really not going anywhere. But San Antonio probably stays on the cooler side of things. High temperatures today only up around 60 degrees. Any sort of rain we got last night is moving out. Some heavy rain across East Texas. That's also moving away. So our rain chances today really aren't uh, aren't there. Uh, we'll just call for uh, cloudy skies for the most part. Temperatures up 
but close to 60 as I mentioned mostly cloudy this afternoon. What about the weekend? 74 Saturday, just a 20% chance of rain, 30% chance of some showers on Sunday, some morning fog both days. The better chance of rain, though, is going to come on Monday. So your weekend all in all doesn't look that bad. Uh, we'll talk more about that seven-day forecast here in just a little bit, but let's get over to Samuel now and check in on the traffic. Friday mornings, usually good to us when it comes to that morning commute. Still yeah. looks okay, right? Yeah, it still looks okay, but you can see the traffic here at 35 and Thousand Oaks uh, building a little bit as folks uh, head to work this morning. And good morning to you if you're just joining us here. Let's take a look at that travel time between New Braunfels and 410 right now. Uh, 20 minutes if you're heading northbound to New Braunfels from 410, 19 minutes if you're heading southbound into San Antonio. And taking a look at 410 as well uh, this morning, that travel time looks good on the northwest side, uh, seven minutes between I-10 and 151. But as we know, uh, those delays will likely build throughout the day. Uh, looking at I-10 coming in from Bernie to downtown San Antonio, 24 minutes, 19 minutes from Castroville, uh, 24 minutes on 87 from Lavernia, and 28 minutes on uh, 37 from Pleasanton. We'll have another update shortly. David Elisi, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Three teenagers are in adult-sized trouble after a robbery and chase that took them and police on a high-speed trip along three different highways around town. Katrina Weber is live where it all ended, Loop 1604 Access Road near Dove Canyon. So, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that the car they were in was stolen. What more can you tell us about that? Well, good morning. Yeah, that's right. That is the robbery part of this whole situation. Police say that that car was taken from a man at a hotel along with some of his other property. Uh, it all ended, it led to a chase and then that ended here. Let me show you how things looked a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, police stopped the car with the assistance of the Bear County Sheriff's Office and their spike strip. They flattened the tires on that stolen car. Uh, three teenagers who were inside were quickly taken into custody. The police say that that car, again, was taken from a man at a hotel. Uh, at some point later, around 4 o'clock this morning, they spotted the car on the street, tried to stop it, and then that is what led to the chase, which at some points reached speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. They went along three different highways and several city streets before they were able to get that car to stop here at the Loop 1604 access road near Dove Canyon. Again, three people in custody. Uh, police tell us that the man who owned the car did suffer a slight injury. He was hit in the head with a gun uh, as the people took his car. Uh, and so, again, those teenagers in custody now facing a number of charges. Reporting live on the far west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. In your morning headlines, President Joe Biden planning to visit Houston today to meet with local and state leaders in the aftermath of the winter storm. It'll be the first time President Biden visits a community after a natural disaster. More than 7 million Texans are still facing water disruptions and about 11,000 still don't have power. The president is also scheduled to visit a vaccine distribution center after the weather delayed delivery of about 6 million doses. And President Joe Biden ordered his first military operation launching airstrikes in eastern Syria. ABC reports that officials say it was a retaliation for a rocket attack that wounded five Americans earlier this month. ABC's Ike Ajachi has more. Good morning. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was visiting sailors at an event yesterday in California. At the same time, he was monitoring this operation he says was successful. This morning, President Biden's first military strike launching two warplanes into eastern Syria. The target, a group of buildings in eastern Syria defense officials say are owned by Iranian-backed militias, believed responsible for recent attacks against Americans in Iraq. We're confident in, uh, in the target that we went after. We know what we hit. President Biden says the airstrikes were in response to a rocket attack on U.S. forces earlier this month outside Erbil in northern Iraq. The rocket attack slamming into a base that housed U.S. soldiers and contractors, wounding five Americans. These are dangerous attacks. Officials tell ABC News Biden's airstrike could have resulted in a handful of casualties, but that it was the least lethal option. And this morning, congressional reaction already flowing in. Representative Mikey Sherrill telling MSNBC. You can't simply attack U.S. troops without any response. And yet the response that he decided upon was measured. The Pentagon spokesperson telling ABC that the Biden administration, quote, acted in a deliberate manner that aims to de-escalate the overall situation. 
Now, President Biden says he's open to rejoining the Iran nuclear deal that the previous administration pulled out of. However, he says he wants to see even more restrictions. In Washington, Ike Ajachi, ABC News. Back here in Texas, a large fire at a recycling plant in Tarrant County is still smoldering this morning. It broke out yesterday afternoon on the border between Fort Worth and Richland Hills. More than 100 firefighters from at least 11 cities working to keep it contained. Both cities have been dealing with water loss caused by either pump failure or water main breaks from the recent winter storms. Officials say the water issues impacted firefighters trying to extinguish the flames. They say only a few employees had minor injuries. And in the latest immigration news, a border crossing in El Paso will start processing asylum seekers who have been forced to wait in Mexico. It will join the facilities in Brownsville and San Isidro, California, as the only places processing applications right now. It comes after President Joe Biden began rolling back the remain in Mexico policy from his predecessor. The White House estimates that about 25,000 people still have active immigration cases right now. A federal judge in Texas has ruled that the federal moratorium on evictions is unconstitutional. Former President Donald Trump stopped evictions this past September, citing the pandemic. But a group of Texas landlords and property owners then went to court saying the government didn't have the power to stop evictions. The U.S. Department of Justice can still appeal the decision. And a former U.S. Olympics, Olympics gymnastic coach who had ties to disgraced sports doctor Larry Nassar has killed himself in Michigan. It happened a few hours after Michigan's attorney general announced that the coach would face charges for two dozen crimes, including human trafficking. Gettert was facing charges for turning his gym in Lansing, Michigan, into a criminal enterprise by coursing gymnasts to train there and then abusing them. It is now 639 and we're down to 50 degrees. A little chilly this morning. A little bit. Grab your, grab your jackets, grab your coats. After the break, we'll hear from a local professor who tells us why Black History Month is important here in San Antonio. And welcome back. As we celebrate Black History Month, we are learning more from our leaders here in the community. One of those leaders is Trinity professor, Dr. Kerry Lattimore, and we asked him to share some of his experience with us and the importance of Black History Month. RJ Marquez spoke to Lattimore and has more for us. Chances are you've seen Trinity professor Kerry Lattimore on KSAT 12 before. Dr. Lattimore is an associate professor, historian, and author. He's been interviewed by many of our reporters to discuss our city's history and various other topics. But now we're getting to know some of Dr. Lattimore's history. He was commissioned by KSAT to write a column on the importance of Black History Month. I was thinking really about the beauty of it um, because you can really have almost like an artistic beauty to Black History Month and how you look at it. And I was thinking about the beauty of the family that I grew up in and how, you know, people shared with one another. Lattimore grew up in rural Virginia. He attended church with his family where he learned the value of community and sharing with each other. He wrote about his father, who wasn't allowed to walk on one side of the street when he was a kid, and then decades later would become a magistrate of that same county. He did not let that destroy him. And so the same streets that he could not walk on or, or was pushed off of, in a sense, are the streets that he kind of has jurisdiction over later in his life. It's a story of overcoming. Like his father, mother, and many others that came before him, Dr. Lattimore feels the month is an opportunity to reflect on the unknown and unrecognized black heroes of the past and present. When you think about each of our families, you know, the families that we come from, we think of their experiences and the stories that they had to tell. In many ways, those stories are just as remarkable as the stories of the people that we've learned from from the past. But as a historian, Dr. Lattimore also writes about the complexity of black history. He says it is diverse and beautiful while also painful and haunting at the same time. His parents grew up in segregated schools, but they were not defined by racial tensions in the South. They fought hard to overcome, but to also not be in a sense kind of completely consumed by the negative because they wanted to transfer to me hope. And so that's a beautiful thing too, that these people who went through extraordinary things inspired hope. 
um, and, and, and I'm grateful for that. Visit KSAT.com for the full column titled The Beauty of Black History Month, where Kerry shares his thoughts on the perseverance and achievement of so many people in the community that shaped black history throughout generations. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Several districts in our area now incorporating African-American studies into their curriculum with experts and educators hoping it will make a difference. It took a team of historians, professors, and policymakers to help get this course off the ground, all hoping to put a brighter spotlight when it comes to black history. Lawrence Scott is an assistant professor of education at Texas A&M San Antonio and played a part in getting this course into the classroom. He says the goal is to help students have critical conversations that will take our country forward. And Scott says these conversations need to start at home. This is a conversation that we need to have nationally. And this is the course. This will be the, the conduit course that will uh, facilitate those conversations. The courses are being offered in San Antonio ISD, Judson ISD, and Northeast ISD. If you'd like some more information on the story, you can visit our website, kset.com. All right, time to talk about the roads. They've been pretty clear this morning. Samuel, is that still the case today? Well, we have a couple of uh, incidents to uh, report now, David and Alicia. But first, uh, we'll get to the gas prices. If you might have noticed, driving around, especially since the storm last week, they are up. 234. The last time we did this a couple weeks ago was 216. 240 is the statewide average. 269 is the national average. Texas does have some of the lowest average gas prices in the country, and Bear County has some of the lowest in the state. So that is something. But if you are on the roads this morning, a uh, new crash to watch out for. This is northwest side. This is uh, De Zavala Road at Vance Jackson. You can see a little bit of a delay there on De Zavala. So watch out uh, for that as well. And downtown, we're starting to see a slowdown at the Y. You're down to 27. Uh, miles per hour there around the curve. So that's going to uh, slow you down and probably continue to build as we move throughout the morning. Here's a look at TransSky. This is I-10 West at 1604. You can see traffic beginning to build there. This is 281 at the river looking northbound and you can see that traffic is flowing, uh, but it is building guys. And Justin, uh, how's the weather going to be looking for the rest of the day? Yeah, I think it's going to be okay. You just saw the trans guide there. The roads are fairly dry. They were wet earlier. My drive into work around two or three, the, the roads were wet, but we're starting to see, see things dry out. Time lapse shows you we had area of rain come through, some fog and drizzle, but things are starting to look a little bit better just within the last couple of frames here. 50 degrees. Dew point is at uh, 47. North northeasterly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Feels pretty chilly outside. We did pick up a little bit of rain overnight, not much, but some. 500ths of an inch at the airport, 400ths of an inch in New Braunfels, about 1500ths of an inch in Gonzales. So the, there was some rain there, uh, but we need more than that to kind of eat into this drought. My hope is that by the time we get into early next week, there will be uh, more significant rainfall in the forecast. Visibility wise, yeah, we've had a little bit of uh, fog here and there, but nothing too bad. Rock Springs, mile and a half, Kerrville down about five miles here in San Antonio. We've been just fine. Beeville, though, starting to see some thicker fog, and that's the case down in Corpus as well. Temperatures 51 in Holotus, 49 in Rio Medina, 45 in Comfort, 48 up there at Canyon Lake. And you've got uh, mid to upper 60s down along the coast and then 40s in the hill country. So a nice spread in temperatures as we've been talking about this morning, thanks to a stationary front. This is the same one that was around yesterday. Still there, still going to cause a big range in temperatures this afternoon. I think uh, high temperatures here in town will only be around 60. You go south of that boundary. We're talking near 80 potentially in Beeville and we'll get some warmer numbers out west too. I think clouds will clear out a little bit. So places like Del Rio could get up into the mid 70s. So it's kind of kind of be all over the board this afternoon. But here in town, I think cloudy skies through midday and then maybe some breaks this afternoon. That'll get those temperatures uh, close to 60 degrees for a high. The rain that we saw overnight associated with a piece of energy that's uh, moving to our north and actually moving away. Dallas got a lot of heavy rain overnight, some thunderstorms. That's now moving into parts of Arkansas and will be east of us today. So I, I think things are fairly quiet, although the pattern is uh, still uh, a good one for us in the sense that we're going to get some more storm systems working in our direction. We've also got some Pacific moisture moving in, so that we're not done with the rain just yet. As we get into this afternoon, mostly cloudy skies, not a big deal. Tomorrow, some drizzle, some fog early, and then mostly cloudy by the afternoon. Saturday still looks good. Sunday's not bad either, although I think we see more clouds on Sunday, and rain chances start to come up just a little bit. 
by Sunday night into early Monday morning. That's when rain chances really pick up. We could see some thunderstorms even uh, early on Monday as a frontal battery comes through. And then some fairly widespread rain on Monday. We could pick up a quarter of an inch up to a half an inch. At least that's the way it's looking right now, generally speaking. So it's uh, good to see that is in the forecast. 60 today, 74 though tomorrow. Warms up quite a bit on your Saturday. Some morning fog and drizzle. 20% chance of rain. Not, uh, not a huge chance there. 30% chance on Sunday. Morning fog and drizzle. And then it cools down on Monday behind the front. We'll get a 60% chance of rain. 60 on Tuesday and then... Clearing out some Wednesday and Thursday, we're back up into the 60s and 70s, which, by the way, we're moving into March. It's here. Well, February Monday, right? I believe March so. March 1st okay. is like Monday? Yeah. Right? Ooh, check the here. calendar. Wow. All right. Well, it was a wild February. That's yeah, it was. <laughs> Good thing it's not a leap year. Oh, it be even worse. Hey, it's 651 and 50 degrees. And changing videos to persuade an audience is nothing new. However, technology is now making it more difficult to determine what is real. Tomorrow on GMSA, how to spot dangerous deep fakes. And outside with live cam again. Gonna be a good looking weekend for the most part. You can enjoy your Saturday, get out and have some fun and then uh, get ready for a little bit of rain starting at the beginning of the week. But we need it. Gotta get that rain in so we can have a great summer. The lakes and the rivers. With this. Three teenagers reached the end of their road here on the far west side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. This access road is where police caught up with them after what they say was a chase in a stolen car. That car police spotted on the road. It had been taken from a man earlier at a hotel. Police say that the people inside then led them on a chase along three different highways and several city streets, at times reaching speeds up to 100 miles per hour. They finally caught up with them on Loop 1604 near Petranco when Bear County Sheriff's deputies uh, deployed a spike strip which flattened the tires. This car came to a stop here at Dove Canyon and, and Loop 1604. And that is where police caught up with the three teenagers who were inside. They face a number of charges. Reporting from the far west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. Before we go, if you're on I-10, you might be noticing some smoke uh, there in the distance. So if someone might have told you about it, there is a fire there on Wildwood, and we do have a crew on the way to the scene. But otherwise, things are looking fine, Justin. Thanks, sir. We do have cloudy skies outside 60 degrees. The high temperature today we will get the mostly cloudy skies this afternoon. The weekend looks OK to 20% chance of rain tomorrow. That's it. 74 75 Sunday. Best chance of rain kicks in on Monday. All right. Well, thank you for starting your morning with us. We'll see you back here for Good Morning San Antonio at 9. Have a great weekend. GMA is